Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome into some more NO1800 with our ultimate guide. So following the end of the last episode, we have completed everything we needed for our artisans to turn into engineers. We have fur coats. We have the university built right here, giving us the access for that. And I've also placed down a canned food chain consisting of three artisanal kitchens, two canneries, and it's being supplied over here from this island by some red pepper, as well as our cattle farms with silos and a grain farm for those. So we're ready to get our engineers up and running. So what I suggest doing is getting enough engineers to have about 225 available workforce. Now, how you go about doing that is up to you. If you want to use items in town halls that increase workforce availability, or if you have, I believe I have the unifier effect already. So I'm getting plus one. I'm not unifier, the world leader effect. No, I don't. I have unifier. I'm an idiot. I have the unifier effect for plus 100 engineers. So I only need to get 125 more. So however you go about doing it is up to you, but you need to get up to 225 and I'll explain that once we uh, once we unlock the engineer stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, there we go. So I'm up to 280. That's a little more than I needed, but that's perfectly fine. A little extra is not a bad thing. So let's take a look at our consumptions real quick. I did expand and I've built some more fur coats. We have plenty of sewing machines. We have everything we need extra right now to supply these few new engineers. Now, the reason I told you to do 225 is because you'll need 75 for the concrete factory and you'll need 150 for a single oil power plant. That's all you need to worry about right now. Don't worry about how many you're going to have to have with the spectacle factory at the moment. We will get to that later. The spectacle factory, uh, if you remember from the artisan phase, we have to consider the return on investment. So it is time to get this right here up and running. We're going to get a limestone quarry, a furnace, and just one concrete factory. I'm not going to build two for right now, just because they are kind of expensive, as you can see, at 400. So we're just going to build one of them for right now, and we're going to let our reinforced concrete build up. Now, you are more than welcome to build two of these. A single limestone quarry and a single furnace can supply two concrete factories. Uh, if you have the balance to do it, just expand out your town more to cover the maintenance costs. So however you want to do that, you can build one, take your time, build two, get a little bit faster, but you just make sure you have the income to support it. And you'll need more engineers other than the 225 I talked about. You'll need 300. So I'm going to go ahead and get concrete set up and then we will wait for that to build up and we will work on electricity next. So while we wait for reinforced concrete to stockpile, let's take a look at a great way to make lots and lots of money. What I like to do is use a schooner just because it has very cheap upkeep and I'm not worried about the speed at which I make this money. I'm just worried about making the money itself. So you're going to go to Archie and you're going to not open trade or we're going to click trade right here. And I'm going to take a look and see how many of these I can afford. I've only got 274,000 coins, so I can't get much. I can get 240, I can get 30 of them. That's perfectly fine. Let's buy 30 of those watches. And now this does require you have Mbessa unlocked. So if you do not have Mbessa unlocked, make sure you go do that um, expedition to the Land of Lions. And we are going to send him to Tabarim, uh, that is Emperor Katima's version of Tabarim, not the, city, not the city itself if you have settled the island. We're going to send him over there. The reason we're doing that, Archie sells these for 8,320 coins a piece. We go take a look at Katima's harbor. Katima buys these for 13,312. That is a significant profit margin right there. We will close to double our income just from doing that. Now, if you can get your hands on any sort of items that decrease the cost of trade goods, uh, items such as Zutsuko or Drew Dernal or the exporter of goods, any of those items that decrease trade prices is ideal. That way you're paying less for the watches from Archie. That just means a larger profit margin. So we're going to wait for our little schooner to get down here with those with those 30, we're going to turn around and sell those and make a lovely, lovely profit. 
All right, so our schooner has reached Emperor Katima. So what we're going to do is sell these 30. As you can see, it's going to get us 399,000. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go back and we're going to buy up to as much as we can for 423,000 and some change, however much we have when we get back. And we're going to keep doing that until we have roughly 1 million coins. At that point, I'm going to set up a continuous trade route between Archie and Katima, buying up 100 pocket watches at a time and selling those 100. That is going to create a turnaround and start netting me a ton of money. So um, you can save up a million coins first, which can take a little while depending on what you're doing. You could save up the 1 million first and then do it, or you could go back and forth and do it on its own a little at a time and just keep building those coins up and then turning around on its own and then set up the trade route. So however you want to do it is up to you, but doing pocket watches from Katima and Archie is absolutely insane. So it's a great way to make a lot of money really quack, uh, really, really quack. <laughs> it's a great way to make a lot of money really quick. So let's talk attractiveness. Attractiveness is the sum total of all positive and negative modifiers on your island that give you a total attractiveness level for your city. You get positive modifiers from things like culture, nature, and festivities. Culture are things like your zoos, museums, botanical gardens, uh, monuments like Docklands or the World's Fair, anything like that. Ornaments also give small amounts of attractiveness. Those all add up under this category. Nature is your untouched parts of your island that give you a bonus to this. Now, you will lose this over time, obviously, as you expand your city. Don't worry. Your culture uh, attractiveness will outweigh how much you're losing from nature over time. So don't worry about that. Festivities are temporary modifiers. Festivities are things like your World's Fair exhibitions and any festivals you have going on. They will give you a bonus for the time of the event, but once it's over, you lose that. Now, your negative modifiers are things like vulgarity. Uh, anything related to pigs is considered vulgar. And then ruins are also considered vulgar. So that will give a, the vulgarity negative. And pollution, anything that is heavy industry. Heavy industry is always noticeable by the black smoke coming out of the smokestacks. So our furnaces right here are heavy industry as they have the black smoke, but things like the sewing machine factory is not. Uh, the artisanal kitchen's a little weird because it looks black, but it's not. It's gray, so it is also not. So you, but you can always just see exactly what's giving you the negative modifiers right here. Instability, obviously, city incidences such as uh, riots and any wars on your island will add to instability and lower the attractiveness. So what does attractiveness do? For the most part, it doesn't do much until you are in artisans and you get access to the public mooring. The public mooring pays you 3.6 coins per attractiveness point. It costs 400 maintenance, and so you need 112 attractiveness minimum on an island to break even and start making a profit. I would say wait till you have about 200 attractiveness. That way you're actually making something from it and it's not just breaking even. I, I currently have 126, so I'm not going to actually build this thing right now. I want to get my attractiveness level up just a little bit. Uh, pollution is easy to take care of. You can move that off to another island as well as vulgarity. Early on in the game, don't worry so much about these values, your pollution and your vulgarity. Uh, kind of going back to what we were talking about with having a an industrial island and stuff you can really fix this later on once you have that industrial island set up and push all of your pollution and vulgarity off to there that way your residential island is nice and clean one of the other things you can do while you are waiting for your reinforced concrete to stockpile you will need uh, a considerable amount for all of the uh, electricity stuff you need 25 for the oil power plant you need 15 for the harbor uh, and you need 10 for the oil refinery so you do need quite a bit of reinforced concrete while you're waiting for that to stockpile this is a good time to spend rearranging your island 
There's different ways you could rearrange your island. Some people like to take all of their industry and move it off to another island somewhere else, preferably an island with oil as well. So I could move it maybe down. I could move it down here to Spittlefurt. That would be a good place to move it to. Uh, let's see. Where's someplace else with oil? Here we go. This unsettled island right here has some oil on it right there in the corner. This would actually be a good island for it as well. That's called doing a production island. If you do a production island, you are uh, optimizing all of your space on that island purely for production. You won't have any residents on there. Uh, I really don't typically recommend doing this until you have access to commuter peers uh, in the engineer phase. You get access to those as soon as you hit the engineer phase. They do cost 30 reinforced concrete as well. The problem with these things is they do cost a thousand maintenance a piece. So, and you need two of them. A lot of people don't not understand that. You do need two commuter peers. You need one on the island with your people and you need one on the island where the people are going to be working. You have to have two of them. So that's 2,000 coins just for that. I would not do commuter peers uh, immediately once you unlock them. Uh, some people do, and that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. I would wait until you have a nice, healthy balance to afford both of those commuter peers. But again, so some people like to move their production off onto its own island by itself with commuter peers and create um, production islands where everything is pure production. And then they ship all of their goods back over to their uh, residential island. Some people like to keep their industry on the same island as their population for quite a while. And they'll like seclude it off to its own little section around a power plant or two. And we'll talk more about uh, power plant kind of stuff when we get ready to build it. So however you want to organize it is perfect. It's completely up to you. I like to usually have my industry interspersed with my residential stuff, just because that's how I like to build. But for the purposes of this video, I will create an industrial area, probably like maybe, I don't know, maybe like right over in here. I'll probably create an industrial area right here with all my industry clumped together around what will eventually be a oil power plant, as well as probably a couple of trade unions and some warehouses. So take the time while you're waiting for your reinforced concrete to build up to prepare your island for power. You're going to need all of your industry grouped around the power plant. You're going to need space for rails. So if you have not planned for that, this is a good time to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little rearranging, let everything build up, and I will be back once we have something ready to go. So I have set up a really slap bang job of an industrial area right here. It is not pretty. It is not exactly what I would call optimized or efficient, but it, what it's doing is it's getting all of my industrial stuff within the range of the power plant. Now I do have the oil power plant in the blueprint mode. I did go into blueprint mode right here and I placed it down so I could see the range of it. Oil power plants have a road radius, just like most other service buildings. And that road radius does not change depending on how many buildings are being supplied with power. It does not lose effectiveness the more building it powers. It just has a flat default radius either on dirt or paved roads. So you're going to probably want all everything with paved roads that need electricity. That way it extends the range even farther. You want to get all, you don't have access to much oil early on. I've got seven oil springs. That's enough for two power plants. You need uh, three oil wells or oil springs per power plant. So I have enough for two, plus I have one extra if I want to do a fuel station with the Bright Harvest DLC. One fuel station only needs one oil spring, and that can power up to 20 tractor sheds. So I have enough to do quite a bit. So my plan is to have an oil power plant here, and I'm gonna have another oil power plant over here where my engineers are going to be. And I'm going to connect those up with a rail line and get everything powered up. Since you are limited on oil at the very beginning of the game, just go ahead and smack all of your industry around a single power plant, and don't worry about trying to make it perfect. You can optimize it later on. All right, so our first train network is up and running. Now your first train network does not have to be like 
super complex. A lot of people try to make them really, really complicated on the first go, and that's really not necessary. For the most part, you're going to have one or two oil refineries to start with. I did have to have two because I forgot this is the absolute worst oil deposit layout known to man. So I had to split. Uh, I can't even get the, uh, the seventh one right there because it's outside. I can't fit all four of these within the range of one oil refinery. I would have to have a third oil refinery to catch that one. And I'm not going to fool with that right now. So I have two oil refineries, so I'm getting six oil wells. I have our small, our small oil harbor over here, and it is sending out the train to go pick up the oil from the refineries, and then it's going to take it over here to this guy. And we want to make sure he's all hooked up. There we go. Now he's going to start getting deliveries of oil over there. I have a single line track going between these places. Why do I have a single line track? Well, because I'm only going to have one or I'm going to have a second uh, power plant right here, but I'm just going to have two power plants on this line. It doesn't need to be a closed loop. This right here is going to work perfectly fine for my needs with only two oil power plants. Now, I am going to do an entirely separate video about train layouts and complications surrounding trains and different things you can do with them. But suffice to say, your first layout for trains does not need to be anything complicated with double lines and crossovers and closed loops and everything else. Just make a nice line to your oil refineries then make a nice line to your power plants. As long as you do that, it's going to be fine. Don't overcomplicate it at the very start. It's not going to be difficult. The trains will go quite a long ways to go drop off their oil to the power plant, and it's going to be perfectly okay. I promise, guys. I promise it's going to be okay. Don't don't overthink trains at the very beginning. Overthink, tra overthink trains later when it does get complicated. But for right now, at the beginning, just do single lines going where you need them to go, and it's going to be okay. So the question that any, some new players may have is what is the point of electricity? Well, let's watch and see what happens when we get this powered up. So this right here at the moment is working at 150. I don't know why it's at 100. Oh, beer festival. That's not a good one. Let's check the cannery. So cannery is at 100%. Now it has electricity and now it's going to be boosted by an additional 100%. Yes, that is right. Electricity doubles the output of your production facilities. Well, that does a lot for us, okay? Doubling the output of all of our production facilities means that we're going to have an overabundance of goods now. We are massively oversupplying. Look how, look at this. We are massively oversupplying all of our goods right here. This comes with a problem though. Now we are massively undersupplying a lot of our other stuff. We don't have enough goods going in to support all of that. Well, that's because whenever you boost production, it does take more input to uh, process all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shutting stuff down. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to start turning stuff off that I don't need. We're going to go through and we're going to pause production on a lot of different things until I have stuff balanced back out and I am not overproducing anymore. And all of my current raw materials are enough to support what I'm doing. So I'm going to go through and do that. And then we will take a look how it looks after that. All right. So after a little bit of work, I have turned off everything that we currently do not need, which has helped our income balance since we are not needing as many factories anymore to support everything. I did have to expand all of some of our uh, resources Again, just going under control Q and I looked and I saw that, you know, I was underproducing iron ore here. So what I did was I went down to Catester and I expanded and I built two more iron mines down there. And I changed Catester to use a clipper and to start loading up the iron ore from there and drop a little bit of it off up here at Flaley. I also had to expand our red peppers down here. And I had to add in a couple more grain farms or granary, grain farms, not granaries, grain farms here to keep up with some of the other productions. Beyond that, everything else was perfectly fine. So again, 
all I'm doing is constantly balancing. Turn off what I didn't need and then check to make sure that I didn't need any other raw resources coming in under our in our statistics screen and took care of it from there. That helped our balance considerably and got us all of that. So now what I can do is just keep expanding our engineer workforce. I'm just going to start expanding the city now. I'm not going to worry about fulfilling a lot of these uh, different production chains down here. The Spectacles factory chain is extremely expensive. 1,000, 250, 100, 250, 250, 120. This is an extraordinarily expensive chain. That's close to 2,000 coins just for the Spectacle factory. Um, if my memory serves correctly, you need around, even on high income, you need about 80 something. It's between 70 and 80 engineer homes in order to turn a profit on the spectacle chain right here. So I'm not going to worry about that. The penny farthings is a similar situation. You're not going to uh, make back your funds from that very quickly. It's another really, really expensive chain. So instead, what I'm going to do is expand my base of population right here and just my base engineers. I'm not going to fulfill any of their needs for the time being, and I'm going to start filling in a lot of this blank space where I've moved all of my factories down here and just start filling it in with more artisans and engineers. I have plenty of factories down here to, uh, that I can turn on as I need them for more production, and I don't have to expand my current production. Uh, but as I turn these on, I will need more raw resources coming in. So that's just something I have to keep an eye on. If I need, if I need another, uh, fur dealer, I can turn it on, but I have to go make sure that I'm producing enough cotton fabric and enough furs to supply all of the extra fur coats that I'm going to be making and so on and so on. And that is it. That is the first thing you need to do with when you get to engineers, how you get your engineers up and running and how you maintain that balance without going too crazy. What, I, what most people do then when they get into the engineer phase and I think causes them a lot of problems is they get a handful of engineers upgraded and then they go ham. They start building spectacle factories. They start building bicycle factories. They start throwing down steam of the motor assembly line. They start producing advanced weapons and then suddenly they are absolutely broke. Don't do that. You don't need steam motors right now. Yes, cargo ships are really cool. But as you can see, I'm doing perfectly fine with clippers and schooners still right now. I don't have a lot of going on in terms of mass quantity of goods need to be transported. My clippers and my schooners are still keeping up with everything. I don't need to expand out and start building cargo ships. Too many people get themselves into a situation where they're like, hey, I can build a steam shipyard. Oh, hey, I can build cargo ships. Let's replace all of our clippers with cargo, sh with cargo ships. Well, cargo ships are extraordinarily expensive. They cost quite a bit more in influence. And the motor assembly chain right here is very, very costly. It's not worth it in, if you don't need it. You, if you don't need 300 tons of goods being moved, then why build a cargo ship? Stick with what you need. Don't build stuff before you need it. Advanced weapons, if you're not at war with anybody, why spend the money on the production chain early on when you don't have much money? Advanced weapons are good later on when you have the extra income to support it to maybe sell or use in docklands, but right now they cost too much money to justify building it. So don't do it. Just keep expanding. Get your get a good engineer um, population going. What I like to do is go ahead and unlock everything in the engineer phase, except maybe for the bank, leave the bank for later and get everything unlocked first and then start fulfilling their needs. Because by that point, you will have more than enough engineers and more than enough income to start dealing with their overly expensive production chains. All right, with that, guys, that is it for this episode. In the next one, we are going to take a look at more advanced engineer stuff. I'm going to go ahead and unlock all of the chain, expand the city out even larger, get everything unlocked, and we're going to head back to the new world to get our, our uh, Abreros going so we can get some coffee unlocked. And we're going to start fulfilling some of these needs for these guys and see how we go about doing that without going into debt. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.